Excuse me, what level of hell is this? Businesses are essential to the economy, yet some managers of these businesses companies or corporations, forget that the employees are the driving force behind all operations. Standing behind a corporation, it's easy to unjustly abuse the little worker. Yet, the little worker can do great damage, when fueled with rage. In this first episode of Evil Businesses, a bad employer screws over employees but his dirty laundry catches up with him. Unjustly fired employee finds her new closest friend, pure revenge. A dream team of terrible lawyers and a corrupt management who lose all in their own game. And last, immoral boss refuses to give work compensation and receives compensation from karma herself. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. So I need to keep this somewhat vague to maintain anonymity. And I wasn't there for all of it. This mostly happened to my friend, who was one of the employees screwed over. But I did what I could to help my friend get revenge. Friend of mine was employed as a barista for a coffee shop with a couple of locations. Well, the owner turned out to be a grade A scumbag. Started paying the employees with bad checks, not giving them their tips if they were paid on a credit card, things along those lines. He was, of course, stealing from the business to fund his own lavish lifestyle. My friend was pissed, and quit shortly after this nonsense started, and of course the business shortly went under. But if that's all that happened, this wouldn't be in a Royal AI episode. Now, my friend was out a few thousand dollars. I'm not sure exactly how much, but enough that it was a serious hit to their budget. And they weren't the only one. This creep was the classic con man, writing checks to cover the bad checks, all the delay tactics you ever see. Oh, the bank must have messed up, just redeposit it and of course it comes back as a bad check a week or two later. Lots of shady stuff. But he was a good con man. All told, 8 people were getting screwed over to an excess of $20,000. So one afternoon, my friend is telling me this story. How he's so sick and tired of being conned by this creep, as well as everyone else. And here is where the revenge part begins to come into effect. I start digging into the business owner. All public record stuff, and some of it I learned from my friend, were their co-workers. But started to learn a lot about this scumbag. He's got multiple felonies in his past. I'm all for giving people a second chance, but this guy wasn't that old, and had racked up easily a half dozen felonies, why he wasn't still in jail is what really amazed me. One of his convictions was for being a felon in possession of a firearm. He was currently on probation for the above conviction. This is where things start getting interesting. A little more light digging and I come up with the name of his probation officer. When I sat and talked to my friend about what I had found out about his prior bad employer, he happened to mention that he had seen firearms in his apartment, when he visited him one time before. He'd used his girlfriend to purchase firearms since he was a prohibited person, straw purchase, yet another felony. So now as things get really interesting. I put my friend in contact with Scumbag's probation officer. Turns out when you are out on probation, there's a lot of things you're not allowed to do. One of them is commit more felonies. This is an automatic revocation of your probation and will land your happy little butt back in jail. Oh and knowingly passing bad checks in our state for the amount he was writing them for, is a felony in and of itself. 8 employees, 3 payroll cycles, this resulted in 23 felony counts of passing a bad check, since my buddy bailed at 2 cycles. Repeat offense of being a felon in possession of a firearm. As if that's not bad enough, when his probation officer came a knock in to check on these allegations, he also found drug paraphernalia and drugs sufficient to get him for possession of controlled substances with intent to distribute. Multiple different drugs, so multiple counts of that too. For those keeping score at home, if he was convicted of all of these counts, he would be looking at roughly an additional 30 felonies. Easily enough to keep him in jail for a very long time. Now, if this were a channel for snowflakes, that's where things would have stopped most definitely. But no. You see, the state has this fund that all employers pay a tax into. It's a fund for those situations where the company goes out of business, 
writes bad checks for their employees, etc. And it's administered by the state labor board. So they pay out to cover the lost wages, but not the lost tips of the employees. But the state is not benevolent in this. You see, in order to attempt to recoup their losses, they can seize company assets. And in the case of a poorly set up company with no separation of assets between the company and the owner, they can also seize personal assets. Oh yes, that shiny new company truck? That you're towing your shiny new boat with? Guess what scumbag, they now belong to the state. Your bank accounts? Yeah, those belong to the state now too. Now surely, you must be thinking, surely this is now enough right? No, this scumbag messed with my friend. And I don't take kindly to that kind of nonsense. My friend learned throughout this process that on top of all this, his former employer was committing tax fraud slash evasion. As far as the employees were concerned, they were all straight up W-4 employees, meaning he was withholding the correct taxes, payroll taxes, Medicare taxes, etc. Except he was reporting to the IRS that all of his employees were independent contractors and wasn't actually withholding any taxes at all. Taxes for the company? He was fudging those so badly they should have been sold as brownies. Unfortunately for scumbag, a friend of a friend happened to work for the local IRS office. And after sitting with him over drinks one evening, found out that the IRS has a tip line for reporting tax evasion. And depending on how it's reported, it turns out that the person reporting the tax evasion may actually get a small percentage as a reward for turning in the tax cheat. So on top of facing 30 some odd felony charges, on top of having all his personal and company assets seized, Scumbag now has the IRS chasing after him. Now that's nuclear revenge worthy. I will update this as more developments come in. I can say that because this scumbag is such a scumbag, he is currently sitting in jail awaiting trial for domestic assault on his girlfriend. My friend and his co-workers have been interviewed by local police and the probation officer, as well as the IRS and the ATF, for the straw purchases of the firearms through his girlfriend. My understanding is she's made a deal with the ATF to avoid charges for the straw purchases in exchange for her testimony against him. The DA and probation officer are waiting for him to be sentenced on the domestic violence charges before they go after him for all the other stuff, that way he has to serve the sentences consecutively. As far as the federal charges, who knows when those will be filed. But my understanding is that no matter when he's charged, he'll have to serve the federal time after his state prison time and won't get any credit for time served in the state pen. This happened a few years ago, and still makes me giggle with glee to this day. I'm a 34 years old female, who has always been a bit of a tomboy. I like cars, sports and reptiles. When I was 25 I wanted a career change, and finally follow my dream of working in an auto repair shop, as a painter, like my father always did. To start my education I needed to already have a job at an auto repair shop as an intern. So I searched and called a lot of companies to see if they had spots. There were literally several companies that laughed at me because, there's no place for a woman on the work floor. Disheartened I tried one final company, who said he'd take a chance with me. I was thrilled. I was promised lots of opportunities to learn and a steady job after graduation. I started a week later and the first two weeks were awesome. I learned a lot, and was promised even more opportunities, he promised I would have two to three hours a week of private time with the resident painter for practice. Soon after though it went downhill. The owner had bid on a contract with a large city in our country to restore underground containers. I had to sand them down, put sealant on the edges and prepare them for painting. Tedious work, but I did it diligently. The promised practice time never happened. After a while, all I did, day in day out, 8 hours a day was sand down underground containers. By then end of the day my hands and wrists were numb from the vibrations. This is illegal by the way, you're not allowed to sand with a pneumatic sanding machine for more than 4 hours a day in my country, as it causes severe wrist and hand issues. After several months the contract with the city ended, and I hoped my promised practice time would come. But no it didn't. I was given jobs that had nothing to do with my education. 
I was told to do jobs that a contractor should do. Like put rebar in front of the windows, repair the sliding doors, repair walls and other small things. Basically nothing to do with my desire to become a painter. He let me and my co-workers work in an unsafe environment, which he knew was unsafe. He also asked his employees to work for free as he had financial issues which were later proven to be untrue, at that point at least. After six months of doing literally nothing that I could count to my education, my boss called me into his office. He told me he was fed up with my attitude, he made a mistake hiring me. I was fired, on the spot. I was heartbroken and cried the whole way home. I didn't get it, I put 110% into my job, working hard, always on time, staying late if needed and never complained. I didn't understand what happened, and was pretty down for a while. However, several days later I found out I was pregnant, which helped me get over my downers. When the time came that my final paycheck should come in, nothing happened. A week after it normally came in, I called, but was told to not complain and it would be transferred shortly. Two weeks later, still nothing. Called again and got a very irritated boss on the line, cussing at me and calling me things I will not repeat. I was fed up, and contacted my lawyer. Here comes the revenge. In my country, there's apparently a few laws that my boss broke, without me even knowing about them. First, you're not allowed to fire somebody without reasonable cause, you need to document bad behavior, and give the employee a write-up. After two write-ups you're allowed to terminate. My boss never did this. Unlawful termination can end in a fine, and the employee has a right to get as many monthly pays as the employment contract would have continued, when the employee wasn't terminated. Which would mean I had a right to another six months of pay. Second, you must pay the final paycheck within a week of termination. We were now going on week four. After the first week, an employee is entitled to compensation of up to $100 per day of not receiving their paycheck. Meaning I was now entitled to at least $2,100 extra pay. My lawyer wrote up a letter to my boss, stating we would be pursuing my legal rights. He didn't respond. A week later we send another letter, increasing the compensation for late payment as we went. After a month of my lawyer not getting any response. Suddenly I received my pay. No compensation nothing, just basic pay. My lawyer recommended to go to small claims court, and so we did. Mind you, it takes about three months before you can appear before court. He didn't even show up in court. But send a statement through his lawyer, saying how I was a horrible employee blah blah blah. However he had no proof whatsoever, but I did. I had my performance reports from one month into employment and four months into employment. And they were stellar? The judge saw right through my boss's bullshit and awarded me. Six months of pay, which is $12,000, four months of late payment compensation, this is because he didn't pay the full amount my lawyer requested, as was my legal right, which is also about $12,000. And added the legal fees, now about $3,000. I was paid the same week. He was then also charged with a fine for violating employment laws. He had to pay 50k. This resulted in the employment bureau investigating the company. They discovered the building I worked at was unsafe. The foundation was unstable, walls were crumbling and tilting, he was told to make repairs or they would close him down within a month. By accident they discovered he was also cheating on his taxes. So the tax agency got involved. He got charged with embezzlement and tax evasion for both his companies. He had to pay back all taxes he evaded, plus a 100% fine. Coming to a staggering 250k over several years. He didn't have that kind of money, and after struggling for about two months, which resulted in him not paying his other employees, he went belly up. Both businesses shut down, and the building I worked at even got demolished. Seven years later it's still an empty plot, and if I ever feel put down by somebody, I take a short drive to that place. And it reminds me, people will sometimes get what they deserve. This happened to me back in 2012 when I had my first real grown-up job in university. I was a clerical assistant for a firm in my city. The firm was a small one of nine employees that also had clerks who would intern from time to time. 
I worked there part-time during my junior and senior year then full-time after I graduated. I made it about four months after before I was told to resign. This was my first ever business formal job as we had lots of client face to face, I should add that the clients were big. Fire department, police department etc. I was brought on by work study from my university and at first really enjoyed working for the firm. I had an amazing mentor that taught me all there is to know about this side of the business. He pretty much kept the firm running and put in so much effort that when he interviewed me I thought he was the owner of the firm and not just the staff member above me. Anyways, as this was my first job, I wasn't keen on office politics or good at recognizing my surroundings with peers. After I started working full time, I began to catch on and see what was going on behind the scenes. The two partners of the firm were scumbags, they treated all of the staff like monkeys and showed no appreciation. They were both male and constantly harassed the female staff and inners. So often that the turnover rate was so high that there were new interns every few weeks. There were cliques inside of the firm. The attorneys banded together with the office manager and HR manager, the interns stuck together and I was with my mentor. For the most part we were able to stick together and get our work done and turn out good work product. But, it was hard to watch the harassment of the interns, the social gossip circles of the cliques and blatant disregard for the staff. Soon after an intern complained to HR that one of the partners slapped her ass and called her vulgar names. The HR manager, attorneys and office manager gaslighted this poor intern so bad that she was an emotional wreck when she just walked out and quit. That was the point my mentor and I had enough. After seeing this we started to take pictures, notes and gather statements of everything we could see that was going on inside the firm that was illegal. After a huge firm event that involved many hours of overtime, close quarters and pressure, a breaking point was hit and the staff was exploded upon by the attorneys and managers. After the event, all of the employees went out to a local club to relax and throw back a few drinks and cool off. This was not something that you would think people in this field would do, especially when the average age of the employees in the firm was over 45. After the attorneys started getting shitty drunk, the interns and my mentor took off to go home for the night. I stayed but went to party with my friend group that was also out for the night at the same club. I bounced back a few times between groups and dancing, but near the end of the night I came back to check on my co-workers and what I saw was shocking. They rented out a VIP stage and had bottle service all night, when I walked up to the stage I saw the two partners grinding on associate attorneys, fondling them and taking turns making out with them. You need to understand this is not only a conflict of interest in my state and type of law, but both partners were married with kids and so were three out of the four other female attorneys slash staff. I was disgusted and started to hatch my plan. I got one of the promoters that was my roommate at the time to get the club rep to take photos of them doing this, but to also send them to me. I snapped a few on my phone and left the club. Before we went out we all stopped at a hotel room close by, that was rented out by the partners of the firm. I went back after I left the club and since I was an employee of the firm I was able to convince the front desk to let me back into the room, as I was there a few hours earlier and was working with them to drop things off for the event. After I was let in I started to take pictures of everything that I could find. I emptied drawers, bags and closets and was able to take pictures of many drugs, sex toys and things like IDs that were left behind earlier. The following Monday I go into the HR office and tell the manager that I was uncomfortable with what I saw the partners doing, what they have done in the office, and especially how unacceptable it was that they were unjustly exploding on me and my mentor at the event. Immediately after I left the HR office, the manager ran into the partner's offices and closed the door. I could hear screaming coming through the door and booked it over to my mentor's office to fill him in. After I blurred out what happened and what kind of pictures I got, the partners and HR manager run into my mentor's office and overhear us talking about what happened nights before. They immediately tell us to resign and to pack our things as they were, worried about our hostile work environment and what it's doing to the firm. I am on the verge of tears and don't know what to do next. My mentor quietly asks for our termination letters, all of our pay stubs, all of our billable hour entries from when we started in my university work study paperwork. The HR manager was shocked by this but legally had to produce all of these things for us upon request. After two hours of data compiling my mentor and I walked out with all of our things. 
we ended up going to a bar with all of the paperwork we just got and started to plan our revenge. We compiled all of our timesheets, build hours and all my work study paperwork. Not only did I upload all the pictures to separate email accounts to send to the respective spouses of the attorneys, but we found out that the partners slash managers muddled with our billable hours to change them to a higher rate to bill our clients more, even though a clerical assistant and paralegal were drafting and filing pleadings. Through my work study, they reported that they were paying me $18 an hour total while they were paying me $6 an hour from their pockets, and my school was fronting the other $12 as reimbursement. Not only on my pay stubs was my hourly rate $12, I nor the firm was being taxed for the other $6, instead it was being pocketed straight by the firm. After a complete and thorough compilation of documents my mentor and I set out the next day to complain to the State Bar Association to show that the attorneys at the firm committed malpractice, misrepresentation of funds, harassment and conflicts of interests. Their spouses were emailed all of the photos of the night out clubbing and what was found in the hotel rooms. My university was informed of the misuse of funds. I applied for unemployment based on their false misconduct firings. After two weeks of job searching my mentor and I got picked up at another firm as a package deal. We became close after and we constantly see each other every other week on a personal basis. Months into working the new job, did we decide to snoop on the old firm that we set out to destroy. Not only did four of the attorneys lose their legal license, they were sued by the Bar Association and l and for fraud, their spouses were all involved with divorce proceedings and the manager's reputations were ruined by what was brought to light and what they covered up. My mentor and I ended up pulling all of the superior court submissions to read over what documents were submitted in court, and they were caught lying in declarations they submitted. It felt real nice to be vindicated by ruining their relationships, jobs and business. I was reminded of an act of revenge from several years ago. It was a bad year for me and the economy was not in great shape, unemployment was fairly high. I had been working at a hardware store, but things went bad and the owner sold everything and moved to Florida. I finally landed a job at factory. It was shitty work involving putting zinc plating on metal parts. The owner was all about profit and had little regard for worker safety. Somehow he'd get a heads up whenever an inspector was coming. We'd bust ass cleaning, installing safety equipment on the machinery, etc. Once the inspector left, the safety equipment was put back in storage so there would be no wear and tear on it. I suffered through it all, as did my coworkers, because we were young, had no skills or experience, and jobs were scarce. One day a piece of machinery I used broke while I was loading it with the parts. The drum fell, hitting the bucket I was holding. The bucket was full of metal parts and weighed somewhere around 80 pounds when it was full. This caused me to lose my balance and ultimately injured my back. I tried to tough it out, but I was in a lot of pain. I went to tell the foreman. She leaves the floor and finds the owner. She comes back about 10 minutes later and tells me to, clock out and go home. I'm young and naive. I know nothing about workers' compensation. I spent a few hundred of my own money going to a chiropractor, and finally to a doctor. When I go back to work a couple of days later, I am informed that I have been demoted due to my injury. I am relegated to being a custodian, and my hourly pay had been cut. I held on for a few months before quitting and moving on. Here's the revenge. It's a few years later. I have graduated college, got a good job, and am a little older and wiser. I come home from work and am watching the evening news. The state I live in has an office similar to the EPA. The news station did one of those human interest stories and interviewed the man who investigated the illegal environmental stuff. The story was about how he had dropped the bomb on a corporation that had been illegally dumping zinc waste. My ears perked up. You see, that company I used to work for used zinc to plate their little metal parts, lots of zinc. Remember my workstation with that drum? My job was to fill it with the metal parts and then fill the drum with a zinc water acid slurry. Once the parts were plated, guess what the next part of my job was? I dumped the slurry into a box which led to a hole in the wall of the factory, which led to a ditch, which led to a creek. The factory had been illegally dumping zinc waste into a ditch. 
I immediately got in my car and drove there. The factory was still in business and they were still dumping the zinc waste into a creek. I took pictures. I took video. And then I turned it all in, along with a notarized affidavit to that state inspector. The original fine was in excess of a hundred grand. They appealed and I don't know what the settlement entailed. The business closed shortly after. Sweet revenge. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give me some sugar by smashing the like button. Royal AI would love to hear your experience or what you think of these stories in the comment section.